You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. De Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu sei la luce de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu sei il volto de l'amour. You are a You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God 
You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. To say la luce di Dio. I hold you in my heart. To say il volto dell'amore. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face you of God. Good morning, and welcome to Spiritual Life Center, a church that love is building. Holy, the presence of the Lord is in this place. 
I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us pray. Dear God, your teachers have made us aware that an inner strength can be built into us by which we can handle anything. This sounds like a very large order, but the Bible confirms it, and so does human experience. The prophet Joel put it this way, let the weak say, I am strong that which is ours to do and thereby to move ever closer on our spiritual journey to your will and your way gratefully loving spirit we lean into this gift of life that you have provided us in the name and through the power and in the nature of the christ spirit that lives within us thank you god amen I release and let go in the silence of my soul. I release and let go my soul. I forgive every wrong as I sing this simple song. I forgive. soul. I release and let go my soul. I release. I let go. As we walk a spiritual path, we know that light is always shining. It is the light of God that illumines the way to peace, success, health, and abundance. Every day is a day when doors open to bright opportunities and positive energy. We prepare ourselves now for a time of prayer and meditation a time in which we will center ourselves in the presence of God and open ourselves to divine light. Let's experience the infinite light and love of God as we unite our hearts in prayer. In the stillness of this moment, I rest in God's love. I breathe in deeply and exhale slowly as I deepen my awareness of my oneness with God. I relax into the moment and feel my heart opening to the love of God. This feeling, this love shines in every cell of my being and fills me with light and peace. I rest in quiet meditation and listen for the still small voice of inspiration. I listen and begin to understand more clearly what is mine to do. I have the assurance that with God, all things are possible as I move forward on a path of divine order. Following the light of God, I gain deeper understanding that allows me to meet life with wisdom and confidence. And so with gratitude for your guiding light, I return to the stillness of prayer. A glow with God's healing light. <clears throat> I am an expression of radiant wholeness. The light of God flows through me as healing energy. I feel this light as warmth and strength and vitality 
that radiate, radiate in every fiber of my being, and I rest in the silence, allowing my mind and body and spirit to absorb the spiritual nutrients necessary for growth. I focus my thoughts on the goodness of God, knowing that every thought is a prayer. My thoughts of love, peace, and abundance fill my world with blessings. I envision the light of God shining as wisdom, inspiring creative ideas. I allow my mind with the freedom to accept the unlimited possibilities inherent in God's goodness and I give thanks for the bounty of blessings that are all around me. As we begin now to return our attention to the present moment, we allow the peace of prayerful meditation to remain in our hearts. In the days ahead, we can create the sacred times to rest and pray and experience the healing, enlightening process that began in this time of united prayer. And so now let us join together as we sing and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, Calls in my way. 
Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. <laughs> Hi there. Today I'd like to talk to you about the circle of life. I don't know about you, but in my house, we eat leftovers. That means there's usually a variety of containers in my fridge filled with whatever we haven't eaten over the last several days. But here's the thing. Sometimes we don't eat the leftovers soon enough. So what do I do when I store something in one of my wonderful little glass containers and I want to keep the container but not what's inside? It's simple, right? I just open the container, hold my breath if I have to, and dump it down the disposal, rinse it out, put it in the dishwasher, and then it's nice and clean and I can use it again. How about something like a, we got a new couch a few years ago. So when we bought, brought the new couch home, of course, we had to get rid of the old couch to make room for the new one to take its place. We just get rid of what we don't want to make room for what we do want. So that's all well and good when it comes to leftovers and couches, but what about clothes? Um, I don't know about you, but I have some clothes in my closet that doesn't, don't exactly fit the way they used to, or maybe they're no longer in style. And so we just move them out of the way in the back of the closet. They're there just in case. No harm, right? Well, it really isn't, and it might be okay with the clothes closet, but it wouldn't be so great when it comes to the refrigerator, now would it? I mean, some of those leftovers shoved in the back of the shelf might get pretty stinky after a while. In fact, I know they do, because I've experienced that. And a lot of us came to Unity as seekers. We were looking for answers to questions that we might not have even known how to express. Maybe we were raised in a strict religious upbringing that had the divine portrayed as some vengeful, oversized man with a white beard sitting up on a throne in the clouds and judging us. And of course, we're, we were falling terribly short of the impossibly high standards that were set for us. Or maybe we were born sinners and there was nothing we could do about it except beg for forgiveness and, and ask to be saved. Well, unity's different. And when I first came to unity, I really just wanted to be happier. I was looking for answers. I wanted to know what was causing me to make choices that led me to outcomes that were way less than desirable. In addition, I'd become aware of my self-talk. And I noticed that the way I spoke to myself was not exactly uplifting. In fact, it was downright demeaning. On top of that, negative situations, stuff that I would much rather forget about, kept repeating over and over and over in my head like a needle stuck on an old phonograph record. I just wanted to let it go. But all that old stuff I knew was still stuck deep in my heart and it was holding me back and dragging me down. And just like the leftovers in the back of the fridge, the stuff that was stuck in my mind had really started to stink. I don't know if you've seen The Lion King, either the stage play or the movie, but the, one of the main characters or the main character is Simba. And as a relatively young lion, Simba is blamed for the death of his father, Musafa. And as a result, he spends a good portion of the beginning of the movie living in exile from his pride, which is the group of, of lions. And there's a scene in there where 
a wise friend of Simba encourages him to go into the into the uh, forest and look for his father. And Simba does, and he ends up actually looking into a pool. And as he's gazing in, at first he thinks he sees his father because he's matured. But then he realizes it's only his reflection. But his very wise friend advises him to look harder. And he does. Simba looks down, and as he's looking, he hears his friend say, he lives in you. And after hearing those words, Simba sees his father Musafa, and he's so happy to see him, but his father has some very serious words for him. And he says, Simba, you have forgotten me. And Simba's like, no, no, I could never forget, forget you. And his father says, you have forgotten who you are. And so you have forgotten me. And he goes on to say, you are more than what you have become. Remember who you are. And just like Simba, we've forgotten who we really are. And we need to look harder at our own reflections. And that's one of the things we'll be doing together as part of the Effective Prayer in These Times workshop that I'll be sharing with you later this month. We'll be taking a deeper look at ourselves. We'll take time to look deeper and remember our own heritage because the most effective prayers aren't about what we're praying for. Our most effective prayers are those that come from a place of knowing who and what we truly are. And in the circle of life, our physical forms, they come and they go. It is spirit that gives us life. And spirit is now, has always been, and will always continue to be into eternity. You know, back when I went to the Church of Today with Jack Bowman, every Sunday we would repeat the statement of being. So every, every week we repeated the words, I am an individualized expression of God. And that's what we need to remember. Like Simba, each one of us needs to look at our own reflection and remember and know we are each a spiritual being currently in the midst of a human experience. On this plane of existence, our consciousness functions much the same as our physical form. Just as we take in food and drink for nourishment, absorb what's needed and eliminate the rest, a similar process needs to take place in our consciousness. Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore wrote this classic text, The Twelve Powers of Man. And in it, he states, there must be a renunciation or letting go of old thoughts before the new can find a place in consciousness. Our way shower Jesus put it a little differently. He told us we cannot pour new wine into old wineskins. Any way you look at it, we need to clear our minds of thoughts that are no longer in line with the person we want to be. Letting go, releasing, is part of that circle of life. In unity, we call it renunciation or negation or elimination. It really doesn't matter what word we use. It is one of our 12 powers, and it's getting rid of what we don't want, what no longer serves us, for what we do want. It is from a higher perspective 
that we surrender our ego consciousness and allow our higher self, our Christ consciousness, to take control. The disciple representing this power of elimination is Thaddeus, and the name Thaddeus comes from the Aramaic language of Jesus' time, and it means courageous of heart. And sometimes it does take a courageous heart to let go. The Lion King Simba had been running from his past, but it wasn't until after he looked deeper inside and received that message from his father about who he really is that the young lion knew it was time for him to return to his pride and face his past. And that's the thing. We can't run away. We can't bury in the back of our minds what's inside us, what we're afraid of, what we're ashamed of, what's hurting us, any more than we can leave food to rot in the back of the fridge. Just like regular elimination is necessary for our physical bodies to keep it running smoothly and free of disease, we also need to regularly eliminate the resentments and fears we hold in our minds. It's just as important to let go of thoughts, conditions, and substances in our consciousness as it is to get rid of the body's, what the body doesn't need. When there are ideas, memories, and thoughts in our consciousness that we haven't dealt with, or when they've served their purpose and we don't need them anymore, it's time to let them go. And if we don't, one day we're going to open the door of our mind and wonder where that awful smell is coming from. You've heard of stinking thinking, right? You know... The holidays are going to be here before you know it. They're right around the corner. And that's the time when we'll be giving and receiving gifts. And then maybe we'll go on to make resolutions for the new year. And this time of year is actually the perfect time to make use of this power of elimination. We can go through our closets and storage areas and get rid of the stuff that no longer fits, no longer serves. It just makes sense to also take a look at our thoughts, take a look at whatever it is we need to remove from our consciousness to make room for the thoughts and ideas that will bring us new gifts, gifts of happiness, gifts of peace, gifts of prosperity and well-being. There's a story of a teacher and she picked up a glass of water and she held it in her hand and walked around the room and then she stood in front of the class and she raised the glass. And some of the students expected her to ask the question, is this glass half empty or half full? But instead, she held out her arm and said, how heavy is this glass of water? And the students started taking guesses. Oh, it's about three ounces. No, it's closer to four, maybe five. And after listening, the teacher said, actually, it doesn't matter how much it weighs. And she stretched out her arm and said, what would happen if I held this glass up just like this? for say, a couple of minutes. One of the students looked at her and said, only a couple of minutes? Not much. She agreed, you're probably right. But what if I held it up like this for, I don't know, let's say an hour? The student thought about it and said, well, I guess your arm would get pretty tired. Maybe start to ache a little bit. Okay. What if I held it up like this for an entire day? Well, by then, you're, you're going to be half numb. Your muscles are going to be under so much stress, you would be in a lot of pain. And the teacher agreed. I only have one more question. 
Did the weight of the class change at all during this? Think about it. The only thing that changed is how long this glass was held up. If I hold it up for a minute, no big deal. If I hold it up for an hour, it'll hurt a little bit. But if I hold this up for a long time, I'll be in a lot of pain. What I'm holding up doesn't change, but the longer I hold it, the heavier it becomes. So what should I do? You're right. Put it down. Let it go. All those things stored in the back of our minds, the old programming from our childhood, the stresses at work, the worries of life, all those things, much like this glass of water. If we think about them for a little while, no big deal. If we think about them for a long, little longer, it might just start to hurt a little bit. But when we get to the point where we think about them all day long, we might start getting a little down in the dumps, sad, maybe even a little depressed. The longer we hold on to them, the worse it gets. Just like Simba from The Lion King, we can't run away and hide from those unresolved issues that, is, that have left us hurt and scared or even scarred. It's time for us to Put down the glass, let go of the past, let go of our error thinking and look deeper into ourselves and remember who we really are. So I'm gonna ask you to do something this week. I'm gonna ask you to stand in front of the mirror and do it every day if you can. And look at that beautiful, wonderful, amazing person you see. And with all the passion and sincerity you can possibly feel, I want you to say to yourself, I am an individualized expression of God. Say it and remember this. There's only one presence and one power active in your life and it lives in you. Namaste. Na Zingonya Baba Kiti Baba Siti Hu Konya Into the sun, there is more to see than can ever be seen, more to do than can ever be done. Ooh, there is far too much to take in here, more to find.
to the U.S. Navy band and singers. Thank you, Nancy Ingalls, for your beautiful vocals this morning. And Reverend Anita, we are grateful for your terrific message. We are pleased that each of you could join us for this morning's service. We invite you now to join in our prayer of sharing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. We would be so grateful for your donation, your financial gift to this ministry. And there are four ways that you might do so. The first is online through our secure website at www.slc troy.com forward slash give. A second way is to mail a check to Spiritual Life Center 41340 Box Run Road, number 106, Novi, Michigan 48377. A third way is to call my cell 248-925-6214 with credit card information for a one-time charge. A fourth way is that in our weekly Friday email that you received just a couple of days ago, there are a couple of places where it says, donate now or donate online. And if you just click on that, it will be apparent how you can proceed. We welcome anyone who is joining us for one of your first times, and we invite you to join our email list by visiting 
our website, www.slctroy.com. And in the upper right corner, you'll see join email list. If you will just click on that, insert your name and email address, we will see that you receive each Friday morning the weekly email from the church that has the link to the upcoming Sunday service, as well as links to any of the upcoming classes. In addition, we will be laying out all of the activities upcoming of the church, which you are welcome to be a part of. If you have a prayer request, you may send them to ronaldfscott at gmail.com, and we will forward these on to our powerful prayer team of more than 30 members who are praying daily for your healing. You would not believe the incredible healing outcomes that we are continually hearing about. We also forward these on to Silent Unity where they're prayed over for 30 days. You may yourself call Silent Unity on your own 24 seven and speak directly with a prayer chaplain. Their number is 1-800-NOW-PRAY. Next Sunday, we look forward to Reverend Martha as she speaks of the importance of our putting prayer into practice in our lives. On Friday evenings, upcoming November 11th, this coming Friday, and the following Friday, November 18th, Reverend Anita will be providing the class Effective Prayer in These Times. It will be in person at the Clubhouse of Northfield Hills Condominiums, just a hill, just a mile from where we held our Sunday services. All are welcome, and if you need a ride, let us know. It will also be live streamed for those who can't make it which means it will also be available at any time thereafter on YouTube. Prayer is so vital, and this will be a wonderful way for you to learn effective means to make it work for you. The fabulous SLC Christmas party is coming up on Saturday, December 3rd, just a few weeks from, from now. And already more than 70 persons have confirmed their plans to attend. An email has been sent with further information. So let us know as soon as possible your food choice. And we look forward to seeing you. Immediately following the end of today's service, everyone is invited to join us on Zoom for a time of social connection. The link was in your Friday email. But first, let's join together in our peace song and benediction. God bless.
as you go forth, know that the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The power of God protects you. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The presence of God watches over you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee peace. Wherever you are, God is. Amen. Amen. Go your way rejoicing. All is truly well.